Sure. So let's All right. talk let's, something let's that is more we who 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 let's warming up, keep the people energetic. Let's so talk about how are. beautiful is life. Okay. Yeah. So we, yeah, like I say, we, we, we feel that, yeah, this, all this is a good uh, reset button. Everyone should look at uh, things differently now. So um, I feel that, yeah, we can push forth all the ideas, especially I think you have done a fantastic job in putting this together right at this moment. And I think this will then form a very good library of information for the uh, you know, participants to really look at. And yeah, think about this kind of thing, because if we're just depending on the daily bread and butter dentistry alone, right, I think we're not going to save the world and that's not going to be impactful enough. So I think this is uh, the new new step and I think you're seeing so much information uh, so, so much interest uh, that people want to find out more uh, I think you're, you're going in the right direction and I, I yeah I think we had a we had a funny we had a funny comment mm -hmm. uh, from uh, one viewer said yeah we've been discussing uh, occlusion for too many years in the dark room in the in the dental school <laughs> maybe we're gonna start at remember, least remember the remember the dark right? rooms in our times uh, I don't know but we were in digital back then um, so everybody wanted to talk about something secretive. They were going to the dark room, uh, <laughs> to the locker room uh, to talk to talk about. Alfredo. Okay, I I have um, three three cases, four cases. So it's not going to be realistic. But I'm just going to go really Which fast. Yeah, I think I think can. people will get the gist of it, and at some point we're going to have a more comprehensive uh, lecture. Yep, exciting. Okay. Uh, all right. So, Hamid, so let's go a little quick review about the schedule today, and then okay. we're gonna give. Uh, I think it's better that we start saving some time and mm -hmm. eventually we start a little bit earlier so we can uh, catch if we have somebody delayed we already have a lot of people uh, pushing to start running uh, and everybody is ready to go so let's wait for alfredo he's putting something together that is gonna show us and then we start from there all right okay Okay, so, so, so far, so we're going to so, have, let's say about the first group, so we're going to have Dr. Wen Shu, and he's going to talk about wellness through the power of the tongue. That's going to be really amazing. We start with the, all the people all over the other side of the world. Then we're going to have Emilio. Me, me, oh my God, I'm excited. And he's going to talk about the chewing cycles versus canine guidance. And uh, that's it. Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence is coming Lawrence after. Yeah, Lawrence so Lawrence, he say, I'm an early bird. So he say, well, I wake up, I need to start it first. I say, I need to put the European. No, I wake up at four in the morning. I say, okay, let's put it on. <laughs> he is, so that's awesome. And then we're going to have Francesca, my friend Francesca. She's so excited. I love the passion. I really love what you guys are putting in social media. This has been one of the most beautiful things. Fantastic. And uh, Francesca is going to talk about how to do all of this pretending to be in a deserted island, huh? My God, that's yeah. tough. Actually, I kind of make a little segment. I, I went tiny bit into the desert in, 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 with a part of the crew that I'm going to uh, show tonight. So yeah. a little bit inspired. I think it's good uh, that we always have that alternative. Uh, plan B, when we're going to be in the desert and we're going to have no instrumentation, just understanding of physiology. That's the only thing that we will have. It's a good okay. start. Then yeah. we have Ben Sutter. Oh my God, Ben Sutter is gonna blow your mind. I don't even gonna tell you, but I gonna kinda tell you. Keep your phone ready because Ben is gonna make us interact. How amazing is this? That we're gonna put the people to get together and that is, uh, I can see the... Now we have the... So oh, oh, it's good. I think it's up. Okay. Yeah, no, but hold on. We're going to throw first another video. Um, here we go. It's Alfredo who is driving. I'm, I'm not. So I think Alfredo, we're going to take control a little bit and then we start. Uh, 
Alfredo make another marathon yesterday for Venezuela uh, in well, Esteri. God bless him. Yeah. Wake up with the heart, full. This is nothing beautiful that do what you love, huh? My God. It's, 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 it's definitely a labor of love. Yes. So we have an amazing rest of the day. We have, we went into, um, what was the last one you say? Ben Sutter, that we say mm -hmm. that he's going to help us to interact. Then we're going to have Gerardo Juarez, that he really is going to, show you all this holistic it's approach fantastic. And, and then we go with to lucas lucas is going to talk about the uh, full mouth full uh, uh, vertical occlusal dimension vertical holistic, vertical, holistic approach holistic yes. approach and then we have peter and mariano back to back that's going to be a great one that was going to be great actually i spoke with peter yesterday and he's so excited he has some technical issues that i couldn't even assist him because I was super late trying to do my work, but he is in, in Pennsylvania, so he doesn't have his main computer. So that was yes. like a full challenge for him to collect material for his lecture. But that was uh, mm. it, it really amazing for him. Okay, what else and we then, have after? And then after that, we're gonna have Patricia, which is, uh, again, one of my most favorite parts, uh, early uh, uh, occlusion from birth to, uh, early occlusion from birth to, to adulthood. Yes. Um, oh, and we have then. Dr. McClendon. Jeff McClendon is going to talk after on the OBI, I guess, uh, subject. My God, yeah. He called me yesterday. I went, that was the other thing. Everybody called me yesterday to confirm, and that was like a hard to focus. And everybody was trying to have that break in a moment to get out to call me. And then I need to be... And then he said, no, I just want to say, how are you doing? I don't even know. You know, he's so fun. So. <laughs> he is, he's a character. Oh my God. Um, then we have Constantin. Constantin is going to um, talk about those uh, difficult cases uh, uh, with the post-surgical uh, yes. cases and, and all the EMG studies he did on those cases. Um, Dara. Dara is going to talk about, uh, let me see. Nati, what's going on? Okay, Dara says from lips, teeth, tongue to toes, an integrative uh, and whole person approach to uh, orthodontics. No, sorry, no, no, Again, everything okay? Yeah. We're okay. He was calling me. No, we have a uh, something. Okay, let's see. Looks like a. Uh, okay, we have. That's what. Now I understand. See, Dylan, so I really have to apologize because Natalia has a uh, mistake into the schedule. You confirm for what time, Natalia? Eleven oh five. Cyril, my apologies. Honestly, this is. I'm really, really, really sorry. No, I don't understand how this happened. Now I understand your message that you sent me um, because you couldn't find your lecture. And this is a mistake into the schedule. So, so, so sorry. So Cyril, I know that you between, question... Lucas, between Lucas and Peter? Yes. Natalia, can you okay. confirm and send that everybody uh, one of those corrections? We really apologize. Um, so Cyril, oh my God, I feel so bad. I hope you're watching right now. Let me check. 
Oh my God, make too much sense now. So sorry. All right, I thought there was a big space there between the two. I thought it was yeah, that was. Okay, well, the space is there, and we're gonna have Cyril, and uh, between Lucas and Peter Farrow. Can right? you contact Cyril, please? Okay. Okay. It, this is effects of the marathon. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Blackout. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have. Okay. So then we have Cyril. So we have Cyril after Lucas. Right. Then we have Peter. Nati uh, Alfredo has already Cyril's lecture and the other one that they send it. Thank you so much. Uh, then Mariano, Patricia, Jeff, Roy, Constantine, Dr. Dr. Dara is going to be amazing. Yes. It's going to be 245. Exactly. Then we have Robert Walker. Dr. Walker is going to talk about cardiodontics and the application for what we're doing. Uh, then we have Curtis Vestersand. Curtis is going to... What is he talking about? Uh, Curtis is Why talking about... Why do we integrate posture? Yeah. Yes, that's an important question. There was a big, huge, I think, consensus. Everybody thought posture is an element that we have to all watch out for. Uh, and then uh, we're going to talk to Alejandro, Alejandro Martinez. That was, that was one of uh, the best uh, interviews, if not. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, uh, conservative uh, jaw um, Instead, in lieu of surgeries, conservative uh, uh, work in there, how he's treating the patients after 20 some odd years of doing surgeries on them. Awesome. And then at, uh, at 5.05, we have uh, Dr. Richard Roble, another one of the uh, very interesting sur uh, surgically assisted uh, uh, orthodontic treatments. Yeah, corticotomy. You guys are going to flip when you're going to see these cases. That's really, really amazing. Exactly. Then we have Mariana. I think uh, most people know what Mariana does, the amazing work it does, yeah. she does with the expansion of the upper arch. She, she call it like facial middle development. And yeah, she's going to be really excited. Actually, she is also really busy. So we really want to say thank you for trying to share the time. Uh, you know, she between the kids, the office, exactly. and a few webinars. Uh, it's been amazing that we give you the support. And then we're going to close the uh, uh, the last one is Dr. Robert Kirstein, which was another very interesting uh, speaker subject that very few of us uh, have uh, delved into the neurophysiology of the uh, of the teeth and how it affects yeah. the bite and the symptomology that it gives us. Uh, that's a really good one. Beautiful. And, course, and then I'm going to have to talk at the end, of course. Um, I don't know how you're going to so, contain yourself until then. No, my God, I recorded. No, imagine if I didn't record that. I don't know in 12 hours how it's going to be my energy levels. For now, I'm using it in a, in a full power because I barely sleep. So, but so far, so it's going to be good. I'm going to show cases in kids, adults, and pretty much a case with no much instrumentation. A real patient from France, and and that now is in Germany. So we will show all these these adventures that we have. So and then so Forget. technically we're gonna be finished about six fifty, about seven twenty, seven twenty five. We were supposed to be closing. Um, so let me ask you something: Does this count for a real marathon or is it a half marathon? <laughs> my god i don't imagine a, a full one jesus christ how can you go longer than this uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is oh my god this is we're really gonna be that's just uh, a rhetorical question you don't have to answer it's okay yeah i think i think 12 and a half 13 hours is 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 enough it's enough so that's beautiful so i hope most Even, people um uh, join us so let's start, what we're going to start now, and then we can uh, get uh, so the speakers a little earlier because I know that it's going to be eventually delayed, so technical issues. So 
Dr. Wen Chu, thank you so much. I know that uh, that you're also really busy and we really, really appreciate the material that you're going to share with us. People is really excited. Uh, we've been talking about to you about you a lot and the concept of linguodontics. That is a sexy name and I think it's a good thing to, to, to spread all over. Um, so, okay, are you? Ready? Whoa! <laughs> um, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm giving the first leg. Um, after I finish running, oh, I can take my rest for the next 12 hours. Yeah, <laughs> that's no fair. But you, have that's the, you have the first leg. You have the first leg of the, this marathon. And um, I will be a little bit greedy. I mean, look, I think every one of us, uh, we have so, so much we want to uh, give out and share. Uh, time is precious, uh, very little. And uh, I'll just try my best to just speak a little bit faster and we'll try to get more information in. Uh, once I see, hit the mark, yes, I'll pass the baton and then uh, the next next runner will go. All right, so um, awesome. we'll just stick to Perfect. the high Perfect, go ahead. Yep. It's all so, yours. So, it's all yours, man. Let's get it started. So, wow, I, I get a 15 minute extra. <laughs> <laughs> man, maybe okay. 10. Let's see. We, we, we will see how we go with the marathon. All right. Okay, so um, yep, thank you, thank you very much, um, Javier and Hamid, for organizing this, and uh, it's a great honor to like say run the first leg, and I think uh, time is precious. We'll start the marathon. Okay, on your mark, get set. Um, okay, so for me, <laughs> uh, like I say, I, I I want to be integrative in my uh, approach to help my patient. So um, as, a, as, as a Chinese, sorry, I think uh, it's good that we can draw back to some of our ancient art of healing from traditional Chinese medicine. Some really uh, essence of uh, healthcare is also being discussed. So these three sentences, right, literally say, talk about sang yi zi wei bing, you know, like, you know, we really try our best to treat before it happens, so prevention. And then if there's zhong yi zi yu bing, if there is a, a small problem, deal with it early. Right, and then when the problem starts, yes, please seek help and uh, get it sorted out as quick as possible. So uh, for me, uh, involving in technology, getting a team to help out, right? Uh, we 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 grow into our role. Uh, we develop our strength, and um, we learn from many people, right? So generally, like I say, I'm a, a general dentist, right? But um, I have many interests. So um, after getting all my um, uh, my basic degree. Then my Royal College uh, fellowships uh, from England and from Australia. Then I went on to do my implants, um, do my scanning from CEREC trainers, right? And then we have our laser training, my myofunctional training, give my TEDx talk, uh, uh, sit in a panel for Invisalign to discuss new uh, direction in the product and also uh, learn uh, in turf to deal with dental sleep medicine and also even give lectures in uh, Catalogue University of uh, Sacred Heart to uh, our friends. So, uh, let's say my, my, my pet subject is the tongue. Um, it's one area that we're, we should be looking at, uh, but we have uh, not done so for many years. Uh, only in the recent years, I would say uh, maybe in the last five to six years, we have more um, research coming through especially from the ENT site um, from Stanford University under the leadership of uh, the late um, Kristen Gumino. And uh, when you look into the tongue as a valve controlling the airflow, then we start to realize if, yeah, if it's not doing its job, uh, we are suffocating from air, uh, without air, shall I say, and we are running into some uh, physical issues that we need to do compensation, and then that led to a lot more problem. And uh, with that, whole idea, I went on to the TEDx platform in Singapore and gave a, a small little lecture on this. And uh, I, I think it's probably the first person to, to give uh, Tang uh, a support, right? Um, and I went one step further to actually start a, a clinic to really uh, look into Tang a bit more. It was, it was called the Linguodontics Clinic, but uh, we had to change the name to uh, DP Tento again. Uh, Next time when you have a chance, uh, talk to me, I'll tell you the story. Well, but we really want to hold, do a holistic approach to let's say, look, if we can, as a dentist, I deal with the mouth, obviously I should be dealing with the tongue, right? And if I can help out, 
other uh, professionals uh, from the medical side or the allied health side, or, or even just a, a layperson, right? If we can just help them to understand how the tongue plays a very important role in their life, right? I think I can bring off some health. So we, we, we again, uh, put in the team to put this as the central of our universe, right? To look into this area from infant to growing children, young adult, adults, and geriatric. So the whole life cycle evolve, involve the tongue. And we can actually do a lot at every single stage to actually help to improve the health of our patients, right? So if you look at this uh, Cine MRI, it's very telling, right? That the tongue takes up a large volume of the oral cavity. And when it's up in the roof of the mouth, right, it opens up the airway at the back, right, that and ensure that we can breathe through from nose to lungs, right. This valve is not blocking. But when the mouth is open and the tongue is in low position, then it's actually possible to create a lot of blockage around the back area. And uh, you can see that when that happens, uh, we need to open the airway and forward head posturing opens up the uh, uh, space here, right. And obviously, if we do too much compensation, uh, that can lead on to very much uh, uh, strenuous uh, exercises or um, tension in terms of our muscles, uh, supporting the head, neck area. And uh, I, I spoke about the, uh, you know, the tensegrity of the, the mouth. So you can imagine the tongue and the jaw joint, right, and the neck. We can actually do a very nice balance if you put the tongue up, right, and it opens up the back part of your whole condom as the tongue push up, all right? Correct. So, so that supports the jaw, right, in a very neutral position. And at the same time, it will put your whole head neck into a good alignment. Many uh, uh, speaker will actually uh, emphasize on that. So good, uh, just get that in mind. So life and death with the power of the tongue. Look at this baby. Early in life, if the tongue is not up to the roof of the mouth for various reasons, could be a tongue tie, restrictive finger freedom, or could be just yeah, adaptive uh, you know, changes because from pacifier use, a um, lot of uh, water feeding. Uh, Stanford uh, University also had another study on uh, water use in six months. It caused uh, hypotonic and low tongue. So you can see that when he's on his back, he's also struggling to breathe when... Yeah, the tongue is on the low position. So you can imagine, yeah, throughout life, if this is the case, how severe the situation can be. Compared to this baby, lip seal. Open up the mouth, the suction is open, uh, release, but the tongue is still up at the roof of the mouth at the moment. And this baby slips like a baby. Tongue just came down. So. If we can keep the tongue up, right, lips together, breathe through the nose, tongue up, lip close, breathe through the nose, right, and a proper swallow, I think we can, uh, from, from the birth, right, we are able to commit to a very good uh, growth and development. So suck and swallow brief reflexes are all dependent on tongue up position. And if we look into um, neurology of breastfeeding, uh, it involves all the cranial nerves, really um, from the sensing of the nipple, turning of the head, right, engagement on the facial and the tongue and the mouth into lactate, you know, to suction legs and latching on and then the whole rhythmic movement of the tongue, then uh, coordinating between swallowing all, right, then you will see that how the trigeminal nerve, the facial nerve, right, costopharyngeal, hypocostal, right, and the vagus nerve play a very important part in coordinating between, yeah, when you swallow, you stop breathing, and then the whole uh, gastrointestinal component. So even uh, olfactory, our sight, right, in the vestibular cochlea, all that is also uh, involved in helping the patient or the baby, should I say, right, in, in, in breastfeeding. And if you look at it, chewing also involves all this. So when you have some bolus of food in the mouth, facial, trigeminal, hypogossal, right, gossopharyngeal, vagus, even your accessories. Yeah, all that needs to coordinate. If not, if you're out of position and you're trying to chew, it's going to be really awkward, right? So there is some neurology. The, 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 the nervous system is actually uh, playing a very important role at the background, right? From the start of life all the way throughout our life in coordinating our cranial facial uh, function. 
And as dentists, we study all about this right at the very beginning of our uh, course, right? Uh, first year anatomy definitely will involve uh, neuro, uh, neuro anatomy. So when we, when we learn this, we're not learning something that is not applicable. We're learning something that we can actually apply every single moment as a dentist, right? When a patient comes in, if the mouth is open, right, trigeminal is not firing that well, then you can see hypoglossal also not firing well, the tongue is down, right? And the patient has to fire accessory to put the head forward. And then, you know, when he swallow, he has to, yeah, a lot of accessory movement, right? The facial has to coordinate with the trigeminal together with the hypoglossal and glossopharyngeal and vagus, you know, too much accessor, accessory movement that is unnatural. And if you do it on a constant basis, if you swallow, it's just 2,000 times a day, right? And you multiply it day by day. Can you imagine you do a wrong action, a wrong action every single moment, right? It's going to add up to the problem. So that's why joint pain, headache, neck, shoulder aches, and of course the descending kind of issues can then play out. And then we have patients coming to us uh, complaining of craniofacial pain, right? And if we just treat uh, the site, we might miss the whole big picture, right? And then we want to go back to some, let's say the ba basic, the neurology, right? Understand that and I think it gives us a lot more indication and that helps us to actually deal with the problem. So all 12 cranial nerves, go back, understand it, love it, right? And you will become your good friends and they will help you to understand the problem, right? And it's just like a light switch. So now you can see, oh, which bulbs is actually off. And now you know where are the connection and you know where are the switches to turn on and off so that you can uh, treat accordingly. So right at the very beginning, the cranial, uh, should I say the, the uh, cranial nerves, yes, uh, together with uh, subtle low brief reflexes, actually one of the main thing that they're trying to do, right, is to help us to do one thing right. Make sure we can breathe protect our cardiopulmonary system. If the moment we drop our jaw, drop our tongue, drop our head, all the accessory hypoglossal and also the trigeminal not firing, yeah, you, you can't breathe anymore. So we are not going to let that happen. So all these cranial nerves are always talking to each other and then coordinating and uh, making sure that the, yeah, your airway is actually open so that you can actually breathe. And if something is out of uh, the norm, right, then you expect compensation and then that can lead on to some issues. So one of the interesting book to read up is uh, this polyvagal theory by Stephen Porges. And uh, it will just let you understand, yes, how our vagal system as a, as a mammal is so important for us to use this to actually control our energy consumption. Because if we're all active all the time, we're going to just run out of energy and we're going to die from uh, lack of energy. Of course, now we can get food more easily than compared to uh, you know, historical time. But it's still important that we calm ourselves down. And then from there, we evolve um, the, the ability to communicate, to sense, yeah, and all that. The emotion is then built into our this system, right? So very helpful. And also this book from Stanley Rosenberg uh, also help us to go to the heads of the hydra, right? Understanding if cranial nerves dysfunction, or maybe, maybe it's not really dysfunction. They're actually functioning well. It's just that they have to, you know, I mean, um, coordinate uh, because of, yeah, habitual uh, dysfunction, I would say. Then they have to uh, activate and fire differently in order to get us to continue to stay alive. Yeah, then that leads on to a lot of issues, especially, you see, when you uh, swallow, it goes into a, a digestive system. The tongue uh, helps with the vagus nerve and many other uh, neural system to help with that. If the tongue stays up to the palate, yeah, you support the upper jaw. Okay, we can move our lower jaw, right? Can you move your upper jaw? Yeah. So when you do, yeah, exactly. So when you move your upper jaw, you're actually moving right the whole head. So literally if your tongue is supporting to the roof of the mouth, you're supporting through your maxilla to the whole head and you're actually um, doing some uh, important adjustment to your COC1, right? So the cervical joint is actually aligned. Then when your head is in the neutral position, then we can start talking about the, the, uh, the bendable and the trigeminal joint. Because if the reference point is wrong, I think this is going to just 
you know, be not in the right position. Correct. So get the upper right and then the lower can follow. And how to find it very neutrally? Yeah, use your tongue to find that position when the tongue goes up fully into the roof of the mouth. Right? So that is a very simple reference that we can have. And also if we can identify the issue of a tongue not touching the roof of the mouth and right from the start of life, and we continue to uh, educate and also rehabilitate, uh, this will then give the person a very good neutral reference. And then uh, we can see a lot more improvement in a very natural way. So uh, even GSK Alphabet pay a lot of attention to Vegas Nerve, um, put like you know, a few hundred thousand dollars, a um, hundred million dollars, sorry, to actually develop it, uh, implant for Vegas. We have also now hypoglossal activator. We have all this uh, you know, different system trying to activate through the tongue system or the neural system in the mouth and try to reach it back to the brain. So vice versa, you can understand this whole system also fits a lot of information to our tongue. So we shouldn't pay so little attention to this. Yeah, and we should understand this whole circuitry well, right? It will serve us well. So in ancient Chinese uh, tra treatment, right, the Ren Du Er Mai, this meridian from the front and back is very important and it, it connects the whole body up. And if you can put the tongue up to the roof of the mouth, right, you literally close the circuit, right? And they talk about the better flow of um, uh, blood and air, the qi. But actually what they're trying to say in qi and also is like the whole circuitry, uh, circulatory system, you know, your neurology, right, your lymphatics, your whole, um, yeah, whole cervical postural chain is actually improved. So just by putting the tongue up, a good reference starts. And uh, for me, I, 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 I believe that, yeah, one of the key, more key components uh, when we talk about this, yes, tongue is play a role, but actually we're st still talking about air. And uh, as a dentist, we can use our, uh, you know, our ability to improve functional and uh, structural improvement so that we can do our six axis correction through orthodontics, prosthodontics, myofunctional, and then that improves the in intake of air. And once it's into the body, the breathing technique can actually help Right, like six breaths per minute, you know, we really go into a 0 0.1 hertz resonance in breathing to actually neutralize very well our heart rate, yeah, our blood pressure, among other things within the body. And then also it builds up sufficient carbon dioxide to drive the red blood cell, right, to release oxygen, true ball effect, and then uh, the tissue gets enough oxygen. Oxygena oxygenation of your tissues and that cellular level, we get the mitochondria to receive oxygen using uh, infrared, right, uh, red light that you can receive naturally or uh, from artificial source as well and activate the cytochrome C oxidase through the Krebs cycle and really release sufficient ATP among other, you know, uh, reactive oxygen species among things that you can actually improve on your pain control, uh, um, like say inflammation control and then that helps to really, um, you know, help, help make the body more healthy. So, uh, like I say, we as a dentist can have all this control very well. And uh, this is all within our uh, scope of work. And so, like I say, most of the thing that we talk about now is all about a lot of linear uh, thinking. And then uh, we, we want to find certain points of connection between different uh, subjects. But I want to say that uh, sometimes what we are dealing with is more than just um, this and the connection can be quite uh, convoluted. And uh, if we think about it, it can be even more uh, 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 overarching into many, many different uh, uh, spaces. So that's why um, I, I, I feel that uh, we need to look out to um, other uh, professionals to help us to maybe even think, use system thinking and uh, computational science to actually put all this information together and uh, we can understand the system better, like how we can predict. Uh, the weather and we can think about how we can predict the body, right? So uh, tongue physical restriction is one area, physical conditioning is the other part that will ca cause a low tongue posture. So when a uh, patient with a TMD issues, uh, please do have a look at this as uh, part of the screening, right? To understand whether that reference point, the very natural uh, internal reference point, is it out of position? Right. 
So once we have that, uh, we do see a whole host of issues it can be um, from mouth breathing, then uh, lead on to feeding, to swallow, to speech, to growth, and then um, leading on to sleep. Then uh, airway, we have posture, TMD, and among uh, other issues that can be uh, a ramification of all this. And uh, we have uh, grading systems, but we are still wait, you know, working, uh, work in progress, especially uh, like colleague, uh, like uh, Dr. Zagi in, um, in LA is, um, let's say, having a big team, working very hard, getting all this um, you know, research done for ankylosia, right? Uh, and we can then quantify, right? And qualify for our patient. And uh, maybe we can provide the correct um, approach to all of them. And I actually contributed by uh, inventing this little tongue stick called a lingua stick to actually help to also assess the uh, underside of the tongue so that we can give some uh, understanding of the attachment and we have matrices that we can actually use for measurements. And um, a short video from uh, uh, also good friends of uh, Audrey Yoon, Zagi. Stanley. We eat and speak with them, but our tongues may be even more important than we think. In a condition called onchoglossia, also known as tongue tie, the tongue is tethered more tightly than normal to the bottom of the mouth by the lingual frenulum. While this is usually considered relatively harmless, new work from dental and sleep experts at UCLA and Stanford suggests tongue mobility is critical for proper development of the jaw and facial tissues. In the study, researchers evaluated tongue mobility in 302 patients using the tongue range of motion ratio and the Kotlow free tongue measurement. All measurements were performed in triplicate to ensure consistency and accuracy. Each participant also had dental casts made and x-rays taken to capture anatomical features of the teeth, mouth, and face. Most people had normal or only slightly diminished tongue ranges, although some had more severe restrictions. Reduced tongue mobility correlated with a smaller ratio between the inner canine width and the canine arch length, which may indicate underdevelopment of the upper jaw. Limited tongue movement was also linked to having longer soft tissues at the back and roof of the mouth. Longer soft palates are common in people with obstructive sleep apnea. It's possible that people with reduced tongue mobility may breathe with their mouths open more or swallow abnormally, which may help elongate the soft palate. The longer soft palate could also arise from reduced tension holding up the soft palate due to narrower maxilla. Contrary to previous suggestions, however, no association was found between ankyloglossia and position of the hyoid bone a horseshoe-shaped bone in the neck that moves with swallowing, chewing, and breathing. The group also found no relationship between decreased tongue mobility and the classification of malocclusion, which two small studies previously reported. But the lack of evidence for these associations doesn't mean they don't exist. While this study is one of the largest of its kind overall, there were few volunteers with severely restricted tongue mobility or with abnormally aligned teeth, which may limit some of the findings. Nevertheless, the results do suggest the tongue plays an important role in development of the mouth and face, and if the tongue cannot move freely enough, people risk developing high arched palates, a narrow upper jaw, and longer soft palates. Right, so I think we can understand if the, the, the jaw size discrepancy is there, we can then uh, probably induce functional issues that can lead on to um, you know, joint pain, uh, head, neck, issues as well. So uh, this is one of the origin, right? So we look into it. In Brazil, we have uh, all these um, uh, guides to, um, you know, as part and parcel of uh, evaluation for babies already. Yeah, for the past four years or five years. And um, um, I come up with this um, uh, wet brief and swallow reflex chart to help my patient. And uh, through understanding, you know, we can actually explain and then uh, identify problems. And then we can sometimes treat early, right? And um, this is a very good uh, suction hole of the tongue all the way to the palate. So we can hold this position. You can imagine the tongue then uh, takes its position back into the palate. And then it's like a rolling pin. Every time when you breathe, when you swallow, and when you uh, move, and when you rest, right, it will actually help to just shape the, the palate into the right size. And then for children, you can see uh, maybe all that primate spaces. If the jaw is grown wide enough, and then the lower jaw can follow suit, 
and then you have a, a, a good bite functional uh, positioning that will uh, last them a whole lifetime. But if it's not, then you can imagine also uh, interferences during function can occur. Look at this, uh, you know, Kevin Burke, uh, sorry, uh, Kevin Boyd uh, actually um, highlighted this um, in one of his lecture. Look, look at the, the you know, earlier you know, cases where the children at four year old have such a nicely developed upper arch compared to what we have now is always undersized. Yeah, so the, the function, the, the diet, the movement, the breathing technique, all this is contributing to the degenerative uh, growth, right? And uh, obviously this is uh, impactful, right? And this is again, not the work of dentists, but the work of nature, right? So if you can get your tongue up, you can see how well the whole arch comes into development, how good bite, center line, uh, curve, curves, yeah, and also interdigitations, perfect. Right. So if we can, can we uh, introduce this? Yes. So we can see this child uh, facing prom, closing his mouth, mentalis muscle so strong. So we can actually get them to start chewing again, uh, close the mouth, breathe through the nose, lift the tongue, swallow properly. And then you can see how it can actually lift. Now eventually tongue is up and then you can see a good uh, you know, neutralization of the facial muscles. And uh, younger ones, we can actually train. And even now, we can even fight with a, a young one, take away the pacifier and give them a chewing device that is not going to interfere with the tongue lift. So they chew and then they can actually learn chewing, mm, close mouth, right, and then um, um, and swallowing rather than uh, having an obstructive uh, de device that can block the tongue from lifting up properly. So we work of uh, um, um, exercises and you can see that some of the cases, if they um, do um, make a, a, a part uh, of their life, this new uh, habit, they have to establish a new habit and then we can see changes over time where the teeth literally um, you know, go into the right position of the neutral zone created from the tongue pushing outwards and the lips and cheek right from the outside forming a nice curtain right and restricting and true function on a daily basis right we can get this going so this girl um she has a tmd issue at 14 right uh, so when she chew her jaw always deviate to the left i have to do a, a neuromuscular bite position make a, an orthotic for her to just get that bite position to reset right so then from there we are able to then define and she is now able to open and close without that deviation anymore. But you can imagine from a deviated position, the jaw come back to center. Now the teeth are like clashing to not able to bite well. So uh, we went ahead and then use uh, in this line to then uh, coordinating with the function right, and uh, take time and we rehabilitated her. So from her case, you can see right, uh, her jaw joints right, was uh, a little bit more uh, you know, uh, deformed on the left side. We had a lot more of the curve and big of the condylar head because you can imagine her she keep going to her left side left side left side right a lot of compression on this uh, for four, 14 years or maybe slightly lesser of her life so when we put her into that neutral position right um, this is what she has open bite because the, the bite is more ad adapted to the left shift then uh, with Invisalign we start and then we start to change and then continue to uh, guide the growth Right, then I always face issue like this where I can't close the back. Then I start to realize, oh, I see. I'll tell you why. Uh, so, but at least from um, this treatment from uh, four, August to December to, uh, 2014 to 2015, you can see the left-sided jaw joint because we have shifted her to more neutral position, right? Then do no normal function. You can see that the jaw joint is starting to actually rehabilitate. Remodel. Because, yeah, remodeling. And because of the uh, muscles that is actually working in a more uh, ideal um, uh, direction and function, then uh, even on the right side is I think we have some improvement as well. Then um, you can see there's always a gap. I tried to use even buttons last time to close, but I can't. Now I know why, and I learn from it, right? Because the uh, the space is because of a lateral tongue trust, and during her swallow, she still have this problem. So we actually went ahead and talked to her about the habit correct, and then we we run through with her house to call it correct. We have also uh, technique and videos, and then um yeah, then this is how we go. Then that last resi residual part is because uh, really there's a restriction, and we went ahead and free that up, and uh we we get to a, a better position, and now. Right, she can uh, really open and close really wide without any more uh, deviation.
right? So it's a combination of uh, looking into a neuromuscular position, orthotic, and invisalign, myofunctional uh, throughout the whole thing to actually rehabilitate this girl. So this gentleman came to me with a postural issue and uh, so asking me whether I can help him with a neck ache. Of course, uh, I can't promise, but it's just that um, from a TMD point of view, we know that uh, there's some functional. So we have uh, myofunctional therapy, tongue tie release, and then this is uh, three months after with the functional uh, rehabilitation. But again, uh, like I say, not all cases can be solved this way, but um, he can speak louder, he can, uh, can speak better, can clearer, can yawn, he finally can yawn, and uh, a good um, rehabilitation of his posture as well. Right. Then uh, I have a patient coming in from um, India. She has uh, quite a few issues. Uh, she has seen 19 dentists and not being able to help her out. And now uh, she was hopeful that I can do it. Uh, again, of course, a lot of, a lot of pressure on, on my shoulder. Um, how can I always promise uh, there's no definite thing in, in, in science in, in our, our part? But I think there's a protocol that we can use, right? And, and still be very effective, right? In a good way. So when she Maybe came, I keep yawning, yawning she can't breathe. And, uh, so you can, last you night, can hear I all this. Because... Yeah. So you can see from uh, her, 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 her bite, yeah, there's an interference at the back. She has a deviated jaw and her low tongue position created that the accentuated curve of speed because the tongue keeps sitting at the back of the, you know, of the mouth, like a you know, big, back, big flat bloke uh, using the back teeth like armrest. And you can see uh, how we actually uh, create that problem. So one, what we did again also is put her through neuromuscular, find the neutral bite and she works with the Orthotic. So now she's having the orthotic okay, in the mouth and about, explaining. Just uh, last two months, two months first. Yeah. Um, What's the big difference for you? So I'll tell you uh, from when we started this orthotic. Yeah. Okay. So uh, before that, I uh, my symptoms were um, lack of sleep, very disturbed sleep, uh, waking up, clenching like anything, uh, swollen face, um, weight gain, like a lot of weight gain and uh, pain of course a lot of pain in the joints in the muscles in in the temple uh, in my neck so i was like a mess and um i think as soon as um i wore this orthotic also also my swallowing problem which was like it had become a huge issue for me to eat and uh, you know swallow. actually the, the solo portion before we even started with the orthotic, we, yes. was, we were trying to do a lot of functional training. Okay. Does it help you during the um, Yes, it helps me a lot, especially the, the tongue. So the tongue exercises are really important. So the tongue exercises help the swallowing, the tongue exercises help the neck, the posture, and uh, overall strengthening. And I think it's helped me a lot. Like the tongue exercises have helped me like crazy. Um, so that's something I would totally recommend also concentrating on breathing. So currently I tell you, as soon as um, I put on the orthotic, right? Um, in two and a half months, I was down by uh, 10 and a half kgs. And uh, I, I saw, of course I paid a lot of attention to my diet, but I've dieted for the last five years to kind of try and lose weight and nothing happened. Uh, but in the first month, like da, 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 every three days I would see my weight and it would be like one kilo less, one kilo less. And I'm like, okay, what's happening? <laughs> Do I have some, another disease or what? But I realized that it was because I was breathing better, I was sleeping better. So I was waking up tired, I had a lot more energy. Um, uh, I still have a little bit of muscle stiffness, but overall I feel a lot better. So I think... Um, the orthotic and the myofunctional training is really important and also losing weight. So these are the things that I've really So had. yeah, this this how I actually yeah. combine exactly. my method. Yeah. So we we use the neuromuscular to quickly get the patient to a neutral because sometimes training the tongue will still take some time. Right, so we still want to help the patient to quickly come to a neutral position, uh, to help them out as soon as possible. But I'm not that dependent on the it's just the orthotic. I call it a secondary device. I tell my pa patient their tongue is the primary device. Get the primary device right. So we work hard, you know, during the the wearing stage, rehabilitate the tongue functional, and if patient put the effort into it. You can see she gains the whole improvement rather quickly, and then from there. 
right? Once we know the bike position, uh, I can uh, cut a window at the side of my orthotic and I scan for Invisalign and use that as a reference point for my Invisalign endpoint and then uh, work towards getting there. And uh, I think more details we can discuss in a uh, future lecture. And, uh, and then this is her after rehabilitation, right? She has lost sufficient amount of weight. Uh, she has gone her, get her life back as a, a 28 year old and now I think she's in her early 30s but you know um, we can help uh, make really big impact so um, a very quick way of looking at how we do it um, so for me uh, I, 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 I'm very particular about the joint position uh, in this scan we call scan 45 and I get that without using EMGs uh, because I'm correcting my EMGs along the way anyway so uh, that's my slight differential between uh, me and my uh, some of the work that my colleagues are doing for uh, neuromuscular. But um, I say I'm, I'm not cutting out uh, all together. I'm just putting in a different recipe and then uh, putting in the myofunctional to rehabilitate the muscles as soon as I can. Right. So these are also the early stages where I learned to um, like say find the bite and then how I use a digital uh, workflow to scan and then uh, able to uh, you know, digitally mount the case. And then now, uh, this is how we send our cases to our lab, and then they can actually fabricate uh, orthotics, or if not, this could be also sent to our uh, Invisalign uh, cases, and then this is how they mount the, 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 the case for me to start my treatment. So the orthotic is also anatomical. You can see there are um, very intricate uh, designs and also uh, cast and fossa relationship all uh, built into this whole situation. This is another case, right? Um, I have eight more minutes now. I have to increase my pace, right? Before I pass on my patent. So, so um, she has all these issues also. Um, actually, as a 19-year-old, she's a player for trumpet, but she developed a lot of pain. And uh, mom is always crying when she comes in and say, why is my daughter suffering for all this issue? And then uh, when we look through the whole problem, even when she walks, uh, she has a awkward yeah. click in the ankle, shoulder joint. And um, like I say, another area that we need to look into is not just uh, uh, snoring, not just sleep apnea. There's something in between called upper airway resistance syndrome, UARS. So this is also very contributory to young children and also ladies, if not even small built men, actually we can actually create a lot of issues and they have core relationship, right? So look into this uh, area as well. Then uh, we went ahead and this time round, I, I skipped one step. I skipped the orthotic, right? So literally, I, I took the bite still with um, the neuromuscular step. And then this is my bite, right? I, I directly give it to Invisalign and start my auto, uh, orthodontic treatment in this. But at the same time, yes, uh, she is also doing her uh, um, neuromuscular plus also myofunctional uh, rehabilitation at the same time. So this is the the initial phase and how we will end up with the endpoint, right? Uh, so my AP is sort of set up. I just need my 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 laboratory to just uh, create the level and line, and then allow for a vertical jump. And of course, uh, we still need some refinement in between. Uh, what she tells me here is that in two uh, weeks, like around here, just wearing the, the liner. The bottom used to feel very sore all the time. Like the bottom is flat. So now it feels a bit more relaxed. Huh? Yeah, like just just with the aligner the alone. There's almost no pain now. Yeah, so the, the pain or, that she's already this occurring, is, uh, this is uh, yeah, she's yeah. already emphasized. So now she also share her... Good. Now her, that things has uh, her, improved. But over the last few eight months, how all these mm. symptoms continue to yeah. decrease <laughs> and uh, we finally get to her to the pipe. Then um, we also use, like say, for adult patient, um, like say, um, extra help, like you know, devices like this, where we can add on to my aligners so that we can actually not only just do the orthodontic, but also the functional uh, correction in terms of um, lips for jaw positioning, tongue, and swallow. So you can see um, a, a clear change in uh, facial profile, right? So how do we do all this without extraction and also without any, um, like say, surgery? Then conditioning. So when she wears a liner, she wears the chewing device and it helps to seat the aligners. So in some of these cases, I do without attachments as well, as much as possible, right? So um, this is one uh, way we can actually help a patient, right? To do two things at one go, right? Hard tissue and soft tissue rehabilitation. Okay, 
So, um, okay, this, this part, oh, sorry, let me just see whether I can just get back. Okay, so basically, uh, once they put that in, right, and then put the device, and uh, we get them to, to chew. Yeah, so in this way, right, we get the soft tissue, and then the good sitting of the aligners, right, we get things going really fast. Right, so of course, um, with TMD, um, there's always an underlying issue of um, uh, this um, sleep apnea. Okay, some local data in Singapore, we sleep the least and we sleep the latest. So that's why we have a lot of metabolic issues, especially diabetes, right, in some of our um, population. Uh, we're also exposed to a lot of um, extraneous light, sound, uh, small city, very dense, um, very high decibel, and then uh, very high frequency of waking up. Uh, one third of our population suffer from moderate to severe sleep apnea. So this is a very high number and also 91% undiagnosed. So with my training with uh, uh, Tufts University, uh, also association with uh, many colleagues all around the world, you can understand that the pediatric airway, they're now starting in 2018 to push for for, air, for ADA, right? 2019 even more comprehensive, right? Um, in in uh, Vancouver, Steve Cardinson highlighted again that this need more than drill, right? Uh, the trim policy includes um, optimal airway and um, breathing for children. So as a dentist, we should be looking at this to help our young patient. And uh, from Lancet also published, there will be 1 billion patients just last year, right? 1 billion at, at risk. And this is an underestimation. Uh, for me, I think it's at least 2 point something billion because of the uh, prevalence of decay, which is associated with mouth breathing again. Then uh, World Dental Federation also issue a policy statement, 2018, in their uh, Buenos Aires um, General Assembly, asking more university at an association to help out and then screening and uh, help with uh, collaborative work. So it's very important that we actually, as dentists, uh, look into this. And this is the latest publication from Sleep Medicine 2020. So what they highlighted is surgery, uh, long, no long-term uh, benefit. CPAP actually flattened the face. And also what this advocating is axillary expansion, oral devices, and myofunctional therapy to help out with young children in their, um, in their recovery from uh, sleep problem. So uh, adult cases, these are the issues if they have a breathing problem. And uh, if we can help, right, myofunctional therapy uh, or highlighted that we can reduce uh, AHI of uh, adult by 50%, 62% in children. And then from there, you can see from two more minutes, right? Right, so we can use Invisalign and then expand the jaw, right? And we can uh, really help get the patient with a tongue up. And uh, really, he helped me to um, reshape his palate. And then from there, we can actually develop a wider arch. This is... Uh, part treatment, he lost weight, uh, his AHI is improving, and this is where he is now, right? Total uh, uh, recovery from this whole uh, um, malocclusion, and then he's now much more active, lost 40 kg in weight, and then uh, a trail runner and a trailblazer as well. So uh, we must understand that, you know, in behavioral component, we can change our habit and improve our health. And uh, if we blame it on genetics, yeah, we are too fatalistic. But look at the 10% where healthcare comes in. If your doctor believes that your behavior can change your health, right, you will constitute 50% of that winning formula rather than just be fatalistic about, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. So change our habit, change the way, right? I think we can get healthier from there. All right. So I think... Oh I my God. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Honestly, we can listen for you for hours. This is fascinating. Oh my God. How lucky we have to see this information. I remember that I see you uh, lecturing some of this material, but definitely you grow this so big and we realize that we need to keep learning because people like you keep us busy with all this information and everything. This is so, so amazing. Um, for the audience, uh, we asked, Please, you can uh, write your uh, questions. We're going to be uh, having, in some point, all these uh, answers for the questions that you have for the speakers. Unfortunately, we have limitations of time. Uh, Dr. Wenchu was amazing in time. And we're trying to set up and have ready our next uh, 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 guest. So really, really, really appreciate it, Dr. Chu. This has been wonderful. Is Milly ready? 
So let's see if he's already. So thank you, my friend. You're really amazing. You. Hamid is taking a break because thank he's you. moving to the office. So we're going to take a little break so we can go little by little in the marathon, one to one. <laughs> or, or Hart, thank you so much. He's been Yay. a wonderful, um, wonderful pressure. Thank you so much. You're a winner. You. The first uh, winner is over. Marathon. <laughs> Here we go.